So this is my Indie Lab project that I did for first semester. And first, a little history. Um, this is Christian Hurens, uh, who was a Dutch physicist and mathematician, and he was the one that inspired me for my Indie Lab. He was an astronomer, he studied optics, and he studied horology, which is like motion and pendulums, and he also invented the pendulum clock. And so that is kind of what I'm working on. So this is an actual drawing from Christian Huron's sketchbook, and it shows the synchronization between two pendulum clocks. Um, and this is a similar setup to what I made, except I replaced the clock with pendulums, and I built my own apparatus, as you can see. So this is what I made. I made a string coupled pendulum, and as you can see on the picture to the left, uh, you can see the energy is transferred between the red and the green ball and on the right is a picture of my actual setup. And I can also transfer this setup to become a resonance pendulum. And so on the left you can see that there is just one initial pendulum and on the right there are multiple lengths of strings of different pendulums. So X will perfectly line up with these since they're the same length and I can show that in my apparatus as well. So my purpose and hypothesis, my purpose was just to determine how the two pendulums are related because I really had like no idea what I was doing. And so I wanted to know how they're related between distance, energy, etc. And also to explore the concept of resonance and determine what will happen when there are pendulums of varying lengths. So my hypothesis was that when one pendulum is at its greatest distance away from the origin, which is the string, the second pendulum will be in equilibrium or close to zero. And also energy will transfer back and forth, and I thought that maybe it would be kind of proportional to the distances. And also, um, for my second part with the resonance, um, which is more of a conceptual experiment, um, I thought that each pendulum length would have a different period, and none of the characteristics from experiment one would be manifested. So this is my apparatus and setup. It took me about three and a half hours to build, and these are the, the materials used. And I have a little video of me building it in high speed motion. And there's music to go with it, but I guess the set oh. is not. That's okay. <laughs> Just so it's not an awkward silence. <laughs> Thank you, Ellen. shown on the previous slide, and then I attached the watch washers either two or three depending on which experiment I was performing. And then I took a video and did video analysis from above so I could see the amplitudes of both of the pendulums and plot the points. And that was the, um, not easiest, but it was the most effective way to do it because if I had uh, motion sensors, then the motion from the second pendulum would interfere and it would just be a big mess. So even though it took a while, video analysis was the better way to go. So this is my first graph, and I graph position versus time of both pendulums. So this is the first pendulum, and this is the second pendulum. And so I originally dropped the first pendulum from its maximum distance. And so I'm just going to do that now, and you guys can see. And so I dropped it from its maximum distance while the second pendulum was in equilibrium and it was just completely still. And um, as the time goes on, the position will change and you can see that as the one on the right decreases its amplitude, the one on the left will increase. That's your right. Oh, my right. <laughs> your left. So <laughs> this is my graph of kinetic energy versus time, which I got by using um, one half mv squared, and I use the instantaneous velocity of the derivative of my position graph. And so, um, like the position, it was interesting because when pendulum one had the greatest amount of kinetic energy, pendulum two had the least amount, and vice versa. And this happens at um, zero seconds, about 20 seconds, and about 50 seconds. This is my potential energy versus time graph, and the same occurrence happens with this as did it did with kinetic energy. 
And this is my favorite graph because it shows the enlarged um, transfer of energies. So this is just one washer, for example, and the same happened with the second washer, but for time purposes, just explaining one. So the top graph is kinetic energy versus time, and the bottom graph is potential energy versus time. So um, I'm, as you can see, they kind of look like mirror images, which is really cool. So energies are transferred steadily, as shown by the smooth pe peaks and valleys, so right here and like right here. And that's when it's transferred steadily, and when it's transferred abruptly at the equilibrium point, um, it is shown by jagged peaks and valleys. And this is my like conceptual experiment that I did with three washers. So go ahead and put another washer on here for you guys. So the same phenomenon occurs between the end washers because they're at the same length and have the same frequency. And um, so like the same thing like when it's at its initial distance and at its maximum, this one's at its minimum. And um, as you can see, the shorter one, the shorter pendulum in the middle hardly moves and it moves in a jagged motion. And so this occurs because the equal length of strings have the same frequency and therefore the tugs are perfectly aligned with each other and it's able to transfer energy from the first pendulum to the second pendulum which allows it to begin to swing but in the exact opposite position and direction. And the, time, the tugs are timed so perfectly that the pendulums can travel through one full range of motion until it stops completely when all the energy is transferred from one to another. And then the shorter string has a different frequency um, and it's tugging from initial pendulum is different. And so you can see how it swings in a jagged motion. And so basically I kind of discovered the definition of res resonance. And my conclusion, just kind of summing it all up. Um, so the energy transfers between the two pendulums as P potential energy in one pendulum increases, potential energy in the second decreases, and same with kinetic energy. And also for resonance, if uh, pendulums are the same length, their frequencies and tugs will be in uh, like perfectly timed up and it will allow them to be in sync. And then some real life examples of this include clocks and swings maybe. And so I found this really cool video and it's uh, by YouTube user Jonathan Engineering. And it takes place in a place called Happy Land, Switzerland. Hey, so this is the experiment that I made and I was really happy when I found this. And so you set your mass on the pendulum, and then you just kind of start off by swinging, and the pendulum will swing, and energy will be transferred between the two. No, the pendulum swings back, Jonathan, and slowly stops. And as soon as it comes to a stop, Jonathan starts to swing back the pendulum. And so on and so forth. Second semester, maybe we can get some yeah. space outside. <laughs> Second semester, that's my skip forward. Excellent. So the Thank you, Ellie. <laughs> Questions for Ellie? No All right. Ooh, yes, a the, uh, the middle string was exactly half the length of the other two. Well, um, since period is it's uh, the square root of length, you would have to have it in a um, you would have to have it in a relationship like that. But um, it would it would still transfer energy, but it would take um, twice as long. And since the frequencies will still be like not exactly the same, it'll still be jagged, a jagged motion. Hayden? If the middle one's like in, if the middle mass is um, directly in the center and thus you're like equidistant from the mass, if you swing the middle one, um, do the side ones, does the, where does it like, do the side ones also start moving or? Yes, that's a good question. So also I discovered that if they're equidistant, so I have little dots on here, and if you swing the middle one, if these are completely stopped, um, they will swing in complete synchronization and instead of going in opposite directions, they will go in the same direction. And so Whoa. this is kind of like what Christian Hughes discovered. But he is true.
But he did use chairs and he did use pension blocks. <laughs> awesome. Thank you.